what you're going to do with it. I do have to jump ahead before you get into that. Well, so like maybe like this slide. Okay, we're good. We're going to pull this meeting to order. And we apologize for running a little bit late tonight at 6.40 p.m. So, Teja, or no, first we'll start with the Pledge of Allegiance, please. Catherine, you want to start us out on that? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. If you would please uh, do the roll call for us, please. Yeah. Bruce Clarkson. Here. Katie Thurman. Marie Colba. Here. Bob Gunther. Here. Patty Jo Horsberg. Here. Catherine Cranston. Here. Lori Bellarkin. Here. Thank you. And then on to the district mission. Together we engage, educate, and empower all learners, bridging their passions to pathways to create successful futures and positively contribute to our local and global communities. The core values, we believe each and every person is capable of success. Each and every person is accepted and valued. We believe in empowering all learners. We believe change is our opportunity for growth. We believe involved communities foster strong schools. We believe in lifelong learning as essential for personal growth. And we believe in cultivating leaders. If board members would take a quick scan and a reminder of the protocols under E. And then if I could please have a motion to approve the agenda. I'll make that motion. Thank you, Bob. And a second? A second. Thank you, Bruce. We do have a change. What would you like? Uh, we have a position that's been approved. It's a long-term sub. The person that uh, we had hired backed out, and we have a new person. I don't do you have the name. Yep, Alyssa McCarthy. That we'd like her approved so she can start right away. So will you add, can you add I can a personal update? Yep, and if you guys are okay with that, I can do that. Yes, yep. please. Let's do it. Thank you. All right, so with that change to the agenda, is that okay still with you, Bob? Yep. And Bruce? Uh-huh. All right, all those in favor of approving the agenda as presented with that change? Signify by saying aye. Aye. Thank you. Aye. Opposed? Thanks, Patty Jo. <clears throat> all right, motion carried. We will move on to... Uh, recognition this evening. I understand that you are Lisa Ramsey. It's nice to meet you. I'm going to ask you. you, please, if you would introduce her. For I us. will. Uh, Lisa is doing our food for thought. Uh, I've been working in our schools for uh, how many years now? Doing this? Well, you've been working in schools, but with this program here, just last what three years? Two years? Food for thought yeah. started last September, so okay. it's just a one year now. Yeah, and uh, Lisa was also recognized as our uh, volunteer of the year for the district. Uh -huh. Thank so you. she'll be recognized next Tuesday at the all staff meeting. Wonderful. So now we need to know a little bit more about it. Do you have something you can share with us for this? I do. Wonderful. Um, you are more than welcome to take one of the cards. These are cards that I hand out when I introduce Food for Thought at parent functions or community meetings where I go and speak. Good try and raise some funds. Um, so last September, I was chatting Excuse me, Lisa. With, yep. If you stand over by that whiteboard, then the cameras will get you and you'll... Right there, that's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> so last September, I was talking with Principal Donnelly at the high school about hunger in specifically the high school, but in the schools in general. She was concerned that a number of students didn't seem to have anything from home and uh, over 80 of them had frozen lunch accounts. As you know, when they reach minus $10, their accounts are frozen. So we, we agreed that we would pay off those lunch accounts, and I checked back with Michelle Mayer in two weeks, and unfortunately there were 50 more kids who had frozen lunch accounts. And still in their lunch modules, not enough kids actually eating anything from home. So when I looked into the 
prevalence of hunger in U.S. schools. It's running about 15 to 17 percent in U.S. public schools. And um, I, I believe, based on those numbers, that uh, we share that same percentage in our school district. When I read about the both academic and emotional impacts of hunger, you know, it, it's significant. Academically, math and reading scores suffer quite a bit, and emotionally, depression, anxiety uh, in the kids. Younger kids tend to act out, and older kids have a higher incidence of truancy and a greater incidence of not graduating at all. And I thought, um, this just isn't gonna happen. So that month we set up grab-and-go stations, snacks available to kids. Uh, grab-and-go stations are located in the high school office, the middle school office, and in the elementary school with the younger kids, the teachers have boxes in each one of the six pods that they will distribute snacks. A group of volunteers and I package about uh, 1,200 snacks every Monday. We uh, get this food when I teamed up with the food pantry. Um, we solicited food from all sorts of places, but Cub Foods agreed to give us their excess bakery products. So every Sunday night, I go to Cub Foods uh, and pick up between four and 500 pounds of bakery as a donation. So we repackage um, dinner rolls or bagels in the Ziplocs, and I buy the Ziplocs and all the appropriate gear that we need. I'm the medical advisor for St. Croix County Public Health Department, so working with our food inspector, we went over, and, and this data is online, and it's published, what you need to repackage bakery. Hair nets, hand washing, food prep gloves, and I buy additional uh, pastry papers that you see when you go to a coffee house and you ask for a cookie. She reaches in with a pastry tissue. There's nothing you can't buy on Amazon. Mm -hmm. So that's what we use to repackage this food and put it into Ziplocs, and then my sons bring the food into the high school, and I bring totes over to the other schools for distribution. That is enough bakery too. It supplies our food pantry, uh, countryside senior housing, uh, the senior meal program here in Somerset, the bakery giveaway, if you've seen that happen at the high schools on Fridays afternoon with the last bell, I have tables of mounds of bakery goods and they are allowed to bring it home. So that hopefully the thought is that everybody has at least something to eat over the weekend or prior to a school holiday. And I do bring uh, a lot of bakery over to New Richmond to Five Loaves. So it's a, it's a significant donation that helps the community quite a bit. So Food for Thought is snacks available to all kids. And they don't have to seek out an adult to ask. They, if it's not a food service time during the day, they can go and get a snack. Anyone and everyone is welcome. Everybody eats. There's no stigma to being hungry. We all get hungry. We all eat. The second arm of Food for Thought um, we developed in January, and it was implemented in February. And that came about, um, not only do I want them to have bakery and food during the day, they're growing kids, but it's also important that I, I think it's important that they have a healthy hot meal every day as well. And so instead of perpetually paying off individual accounts that goes frozen um, and embarrassing the kids in line, and I had to do that, when you sub at the high school for the health office, you have to be a lunch lady. So I was a lunch lady, and I had the awful pleasure of having to do that to two students and telling them that their accounts were frozen. They have to put their tray away and leave the lunch line. I offered to pay for their meals, and they're like, no, I'm not hungry. And, but you know, just the look of embarrassment on their faces, they couldn't leave that lunch line fast enough. And I thought, we're not gonna do that to our kids either. So we started the Food for Thought Fund. And now when a child comes through the lunch line and their accounts come up frozen after they swipe their student card, the cashier tells them to proceed to the line. Food for Thought has you covered. She writes down their names and at the end of the day, those go over to Michelle Mayer and she transfers money from the Food for Thought Fund into the students' accounts and that's what pays for their meal. We started that up and running in February. Through the uh, middle of June, when the end of school, we had served uh, 270 students that way. Um, Jim and I started the fund with $1,000, and after 270 meals, so roughly maybe about $810 worth of food, I, I am really pleased to say that we have a balance of over $2,000. Yeah. 
So I've <laughs> met with community members, local business people, Knights of Columbus, uh, the Lions Club. I've yet to meet with the VFW, but I plan to. Um, and they've been very generous in their donations to that fund. I've gone to all of the parent functions on campus and I hand out these little cards. Um, and if you have any questions after the end, my name and contact information is on the back. But parents too have contributed to the fund and bless their souls, those little uh, middle school kids, they serve popcorn to each other and they contribute $10 every month to the Food for Thought Fund to try and feed each other. We had the um, honor several weeks ago of receiving a very large grant from an international charity called Random Acts of Kindness. <coughs> Random Acts chose the Food for Thought Fund as their Wisconsin program to donate to. So they donated $3,000 to our fund. We are the only um, food-focused <coughs> fund in Wisconsin to receive a grant from them. Random Acts made 2019 their year of childhood hunger. So they have sponsored programs in all 50 states now. This was Wisconsin's program and 13 different countries. We um, also received $500 from Random Acts um, towards a uh, backpack program, specific food to keep those kids fed over the summer months if we can get those backpacks to the kids. So my hope that is an introduction to Food for Thought, and I have a couple of goals for this school year. Um, my hope is that we can now include breakfast in the Food for Thought Fund, that we can continue a discussion I started last year with Deb uh, um, Ravali from Payer Food Service and Dave Geberlane about next summer, while we have hundreds of kids, if our 1,500 kids, I bet there's almost 1,000 on campus until the end of July in summer school, in sports, in BFS, that we can try and feed them a breakfast, lunch, brunch kind of grab and go. So my idea would be that we would start at about 8.15 through 9.15 at the middle school, and Deb thought for a price point of $1.45, we could offer a milk, a cereal, a piece of fruit, a juice, a yogurt, and a cheese stick. That's not, that's not a bad deal and we have then a way to give kids who are on our free and reduced meal program something to eat during those summer months. Food for Thought would be more than capable of covering any frozen accounts so they could eat. We would do that out of the middle school and it would all be just grab and go. Deb thought just one staff person from Taher would be able to put the food out for the kids to take and go. There's no ovens needed, no dishes needed, they just take it and leave. Um, and she would run the computer and write down the names and send them to Michelle so the fund could transfer the money to them. But that is something I'd like to work on this year to see if we could try next summer and see what the results of that would be. Would it be at the elementary also or just middle school? I'm, I'm hopeful that if we run it from 8.15 to 9.15, by the time the kids get to the elementary school, they could walk down and partake. Then we only have one staff member from Taper. And the majority of the kids, I think, are at the middle school. The kids from the high school, too, can certainly come on down and get food. Um, and if we need a little extra time to get the kids from the elementary to make that little walk to the middle school, it seemed like a central location where the majority of the kids are. But yeah, my hope would be that uh, we could work into their programs some time to get them some food. Right now, we don't want to worry about the logistics of this because we may not have the middle school next summer. That's what we're going to talk about in the next conversation. <laughs> There's a lot of things we have to work out, but and it'll happen. But where it happens, so when she says middle school, it'll happen. I, we, I am we may so not have impressed, those. and we are so grateful for the inspiration you've done for us. And yeah. I want to thank you. I oh, think it's terrific. Thank pleasure. you for coming and sharing thank with you us for this evening. evening. I just really appreciate it. should be no reason why she's volunteer of the year. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, I was going to say, it's, not, yeah. it's truly inspiring. We'll, we'll fund the breakfast thing. Yay! Yeah. Well, thank you very much. I hope we don't screw the rest of the piece. <laughs> 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 Everybody's like, oh, no. Well, you may not be hiring them, but. Yeah. <laughs> not go hungry, so. No. Yeah, amen. So. Yeah. Public education is something that we need for everyone, if everyone eats. Absolutely. If they were hungry, they're not learning, and we're not 
no, teaching all the kids. So Absolutely. I love our core values, but my mission is I believe we need to teach the kids too. Awesome. So that's that's a little one at the bottom. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. through uh, you know, a, a, a very good process to you know, find, narrow it down to Market Johnson here. We had six firms that responded to our RFP for construction management services. Uh, we, you know, through a series of interviews, we narrowed it down to uh, two firms. Uh, I gotta say, we've all, we're very impressed with uh, uh, the team that we'll have to work here with and just, uh, I've checked out references across the state and schools that they've worked in and everyone has nothing but positive things to say. Uh, I think one of the things that comes across is that you're very well known for working around occupied spaces, which again, that's part of the, they're gonna introduce themselves to talk a little bit about the firm, but then also about how we're gonna attack this project. So. There you go. Well, cool. Well, first of all, we're super honored and thrilled to have been as Brian made it this far so far. Um, like Mark said, we've got a little bit about the team, we've got a little bit about the company, we'll talk a little bit about the projects. Um, introduction wise, quick, I'm Jason Plant. I'm one of the partners of the firm. I've been involved with all of our school projects. Um, typically, I get more involved with the pre-referendum version of things. Um, you guys, fortunately, by the time you started talking to us, I've already passed the referendum, so that was good for me because I didn't have to help do all that stuff. But, um, and then, you know, one thing I think relatively unique about Market of Johnson is we really truly put a, an owner involved with every project. And so between myself and Kevin Ramley's another one of the partners, there's four active partners at Mark and Johnson. Um, we'll be with you guys from step one all the way through. So if there's ever a, a question, if Randy or Justin and uh, Ryan aren't doing their, you know, their end of the bargain or whatever the questions are, um, you always have a direct conduit right to the ownership team. So um, we feel it's pretty um, important. We also think it separates ourselves a little bit because um, although we're a big firm, um, we're still very much a family-oriented firm, and we spend a lot of time with our customers, and, and a lot of it are repeat customers, and I think this is a personal touch. It's our chance, frankly, for Kevin and I and the active owners to really get to know our customers and build a relationship, and um, I think that is one thing that's a little bit unique, is that we end up coming out of these projects as, as friends as much as business partners, but on the, let me go through this real quick. It's a little bit how we kind of strategize the project though is we've got Randy um, right here uh, who's going to tackle the high school project. Justin Geiser, Justin's on vacation. He's uh, going to tackle our uh, middle school project. And then Ryan is going to kind of tackle the elementary school and site work. Um, and that's kind of structure has been a little bit different just depending on the different options. When we came to the interview, we had kind of two different options. The one that was in the RFP that had kind of different sequence of events. We introduced another sequence of events and eventually we came to the one of the options that we'll talk a little bit about today, kind of kind of condense it all into one one time frame. Um, but the important thing to take out of this is kind of you got a dedicated team with Randy and, and Superintendent Matt Kohler, focused on the high school. Justin and Brian Cutler kind of focused on the uh, middle school, and Ryan and Ray Franco. You kind of you almost have them mm -hmm. dedicated silos on each one of the projects, all working together. And I think that's one of the most important ways of trying to get all this kind of work done in that shorter time frame is you really can't look at it as one ginormous project um, with the same group of subcontractors. We're trying to use that same resource pool to do all of it. We're almost got to break it into almost three separate projects and, and kind of dedicate you know, workforce and staff to, to get that done. So, um, and then internally, additional staff, you know, safety director, safety is a huge, huge component and this goes back to the owner occupied. We have two safety directors will come out, we'll create a, a site specific safety plan, um, not only during the summer months, but obviously when the kids are around too, making sure that wayfinding, um, we've got a, a whole bunch of curious minds running around on school projects and we want to keep those uh, those people safe. Um, so that's kind of the team. Kevin will be the principal in charge, um, so he'll be um, really, really active as well as myself. One thing we do, we'll come to um, monthly school board meetings, kind of give you guys an update. The one thing we don't ever want a school board uh, member to, 
to do is get kind of blindsided out of community. There's going to be details that you guys as board members certainly won't know. You know what, what color carpet's going to be about the, you know, those like type of details. But we don't ever want a school board member to get blindsided as far as schedule or issues that are on the site or, you know, budget constraint, any of those kind of things that you as a board member have kind of jurisdiction over. We want to make sure that you're always kind of in the know. So that's kind of the team. Um, a little bit just about M and J. Um, so we've been around since 1948. Um, again, kind of a family-based company. Back in uh, 2000, um, Dan Market was the last market and um, kind of brought in four, at that time, four key business partners. And that's kind of when the transition came from a family company to a partner-owned company. Dan's still around. He's, uh, he's not super active. He's trying to be less He's actually in Alaska did. right now. He's in Alaska. <laughs> fires are. So we, we had a board meeting. He's texting us and telling us he can smell the fire and the, some propane tanks are blowing yeah. up. And like, so he's not super active, but he's still active enough to see all the board meetings. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so funny your safety guys out there. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Hopefully <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's in Cancun. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, you know, we do about $425 million in, in volume every year. So, it, and we're one of the biggest firms in Wisconsin. We're an e and our top 400 uh, companies for like a two, 280, 267, I think, last year. So, we're a big firm, but really, really small when it comes down to it. Um, I think one thing that makes us really unique in, as far as a firm goes is um, there's kind of a lost trade of having the actual trades employees, right? So we do have about 350 to 400, just depending on the time, actual trade person. So carpenters, uh, cement finishers, and masons. Um, and that really helps us leverage um, schedules and drive costs. A little bit less relying on subcontractors, so some cost savings as far as du you know, duplication of markups and all that kind of stuff. But that's a, that's a key area, especially when it comes to school construction on a really condensed time frame. So um, although we're really, really big on bidding and getting all the local opportunities, this provides an opportunity to kind of supplement, uh, take portions of the work, and really kind of drive things home. So um, that's kind of us. I think Ryan's going to touch base a little bit about our school experience. Yeah, so really what we wanted to show you here is just a little bit about uh, the experience that we have in the education market, as you can see, pretty focused on Western Wisconsin. We have our office in Eau Claire. We've also got an office over in Oakdale, Minnesota, and one down in La Crosse. So you can kind of see we, we put a, a strong amount of our focus right here in western Wisconsin. Um, and in any given year, 30 to 40 percent of our volume is coming out of this education market. So it's really important for us to deliver a quality project like Dr. Bizek was saying. If our references are speaking on our behalf, we think we're, we're doing a great job. So, um, And then also the local buying power, we, we do have a, a pretty pretty large amount of work going on in this area right now. So our ability to leverage the subcontractors, to have the work coming in and to have continual workflow, I think is gonna be really, really beneficial for the school district. In fact, we have uh, just in Hudson alone, I think we're probably about $150 million worth of work just in Hudson right now, so. Yeah, so a little bit about what we've got um, going on with the education market. So currently we're working at the Sparta School District and the Fall Creek School District, starting up at Spring Valley and Frederick. And then also you can see all the projects that we've done within the last five years or so. Um, and then also the, the architect that we've got on, on board is Wold, and we do have experience with them as we move through the next few months working with them through the design. That's gonna be pretty critical. Our ability to work with them and, and kind of work through problems and constructability and costs and things like that is, is gonna be is going to be key so um, and then obviously 90 percent of our work is done in this capacity where we are partnered early on with the architect in this in this form so we're very very adapted to in this process yeah i think the other one other uh, quick tidbit with uh, so randy we should have probably had everybody introduced but randy um is our uh, division leader over in the oakdale office he lives in hudson um so i think from a bidding standpoint we're going to be able to draw not only uh, the firms from eastern part of Minnesota over but obviously we're going to have our database here from western Wisconsin that we're um, really strong in. so I think that combination is going to play to trying to make sure we have enough resources to, to drive that schedule home so that these guys are going to talk project sure you want to move ahead to the schedule portion yep Ooh, that's tough to read too <laughs> <laughs> should have brought my binoculars. go back to the other one I'll use this one it's small for a read go yeah. back well that's easier yeah. uh, so for me this one is easier and I wish we maybe do you have handouts for them? Is that this in a packet at all? Uh, it is not. not okay. Really well, no. I'll stand up here and talk about it. You guys can <laughs> look at it later. But 
Um, in All the bean bars of things George have to do, we just do the <laughs> 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 in general, you know, we like to break, like Jason said, we're breaking this big, you know, massive project down into little parts and pieces so it's manageable. Um, at the top, um, we have five sections here. The top section is administrative and pre-construction um, things that will happen over the next few months. Um, then there's site, elementary, middle, and high school. Um, we try to interject as much of the dates we know for your district at the time as far as like, you know, schools gets out, you know, kids come back, teachers come back, so on and so forth. Um, but most importantly, in the administrative and pre-construction piece, um, we're looking to bid this thing like right after Christmas and New Year's. So I think that'll be a really advantageous time to bid. You know, a lot of people are looking for work for that next coming season. Um, and quite frankly, a lot of work, that, you know, for that next season doesn't get bid till February, March a lot of times. So if you're one of those first people out of the gates, <laughs> I think you'll get really aggressive pricing, um, which will definitely help you out. Um, Not to interject, but I guess yep. we want to, we're, we're talking, what we're talking about here is getting it done in one construction season. I don't know if that was mentioned. Yeah, we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about yeah, that. I, yeah, I want to add one thing to that. The nice part about bidding in that time frame too is really if we want to try to condense that schedule, what we're talking about is trying to acquire the long lead time items, you know, whether it be mechanical systems, whether it be parts of exterior wall, whatever it may be, there's a lot of items that uh, some, you know, aren't readily available off the shelf. So if we can get some of those lead times, you know, those pieces bought out or, you know, under contract, it's really going to help us expedite that process. So it's by us pushing to have that bid time a little bit up front, that'll really help that uh, construction time frame. Yeah, and then uh, also in the administrative and pre-construction pieces, you know, right away here, you know, we'd like to do you know, get our arms around the scope with Wold and really dig into what they got going on and do a good budget. Um, and then also we'll do one of those, you know, design development budgets further on as, as things keep progressing. So there'll be, there'll be checks and balances as you're going to that bid day. So there isn't a massive surprise or anything like that. I mean, it's, it's gonna be pretty honed in. Um, and then going to site work, um, you know, Logistically, we will work things out. Um, one, you know, a lot of your heavy lifting is on the northeast part of the site, over by your middle school, um, as far as reconstructing entrances, and you know, we'll get into that. But that's, we'd like to start that as soon as possible, and we put, you know, mid-April in here, and the last few winters have been iffy, but that usually is a pretty good guess, is about mid-April, um, and that kind of coincides with jumping ahead here. So I just don't want to jump too far ahead, but. Um, that jumps ahead to doing the exterior piece of the middle school um, right there. Um, so that's a big reason why that's a focus. Um, and then uh, from the elementary standpoint, that it's mostly mechanical uh, upgrades and cosmetic stuff on the site work. So that piece is relatively easily done in the summertime, um, least of the concerns. Um, and then middle school, like I said, starting that piece early and working through the logistics of doing that. And there's um, things happening. We pretty much have everything laid out to go to Labor Day. I mean, I know you guys are throwing around the ideas you're, you're of potentially. You're praying for a drought also next <laughs> yeah. <summer. laughs> yeah. yeah, we've also had some wet There's years. a couple things that you guys have to do. And we should to get done around that time, you know, we've worked enough, we know that, you know, before Labor Day, the teachers are showing up and there's things that need to get done. And, you know, it's not that we get till the last minute before the kids come back. There's a lot of things that need to get done. There's stuff that's moved away from rooms. There's teachers that, you know, need a week to come back and set their room up. There's a lot of things that, that go into that. Yeah, so as Ryan said, that both the high school and the middle school are gonna be kind of mirroring together because of the logistics of the additions are going on both. It's really uh, important that we start these things early as we can. Um, we go back in time from, from now until the end of the year. It's going to be really crazy, busy with budgeting, design, uh, owner meetings to just decide what we're going to do with the finishes and that sort of thing. Sort of thing. Then we get to January and it's going to be just procurement, selecting contractors. That's where a lot of our heavy lifting comes in to make sure we have all the tools in place to hit this thing to the ground running. Um, the key on the, uh, on the middle school and the high school, with the, logistically with the additions, is obviously that the students that are still in school during that time is working on a good plan. We can work around it safely, still be productive, keep things in, in motion. 
because the end date is critical. Obviously, we can't we can't skip into that that next school season. Um, you know, you mentioned the the extended time, the extended summer break. I went through that personally with Hudson here not too long ago. The kids loved it the first year when they had a longer summer. And I hated it because I didn't want to go back to school, but. Uh, we lived through it, so I experienced it and uh, had some, you know, pros and cons with that. Um, but both, it, it's it's an aggressive schedule. I'm not gonna not gonna say it's not, but it's doable, especially with the three of us involved. Um, we're gonna be able to ability to share some subs, share some manpower, so things will. The benefits to the one construction sleeve season is cost savings yes. over the two. You know, as we first looked at it, we looked at two construction seasons, which logistically you know you, you know what summer school is here I mean, it's, it's a it's a very important piece for our community and to kind of mess that up two years in a row I, from my vantage point I would like to get it one construction season here and make some accommodations on the beginning of the summer or us and possibly uh, the fall if we could and just if I can jump ahead just to give you a little picture of what we're thinking, you know, I guess any week earlier than when we get out of school would give yeah. you yes. how much more productivity on the site. Uh, yeah. So any, any amount of time we can give you to get in there, it's huge at the beginning. We could monitor this thing and see and make a decision in the fall if we want to hold back to start. But if we, just to give you some ideas, if we add 15 minutes of the day, we can, we could basically get four weeks 20 days of school and 20 days early, which would give them the buildings and the grounds here in May. Now there's a lot of consideration, things that we would have to consider. You know, we will have a huge daycare issue with, with people. You need to start, you need to We would start end school the end of April. This year. This coming year. Yep. We, would, we would start this coming year. We'd adjust the schedule. Uh, 15 minutes would give us about 20 days. If we wanted to, you know, so we'd be out in May, beginning of May, if we wanted to eliminate spring break, that would give us another week to get out in April. Again, the, the earlier we can give these guys the grounds, but there's some support pieces we'd have to put in place. And I think the big thing is daycare. And so we'd probably end up running a, a more extensive summer school program, uh, which would give teachers opportunity to you know, continue working, doing some things, but also we'd have to adjust I don't want to say just compensation, but just how we compensate, because they're on days where the kids are on you know, hours and what have you. So if we extend it a day, we just have to you know, adjust their contracts. Not mean they're gonna make any more or less, just so it's appropriate. So they would basically be done at that time too. We wouldn't be asking them to stay on staff longer you know, during the year when they're off. But so, this would be one summer of chaos right. versus two summers yeah, of correct. chaos. Organized chaos. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'll believe it when I say that. <laughs> so uh, just, to give you, just to give you an idea here, I wrote this down. 15 minutes each day, uh, if we start at the beginning of school year, would give us four weeks. 15 minutes each day plus spring break would give us 27 days. If you went 30 minutes, that would give us almost 30 days, which is six weeks. And then if you went... Uh, without spring break, that would be seven weeks, which would, I mean, that'd be heaven for you guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we usually don't have that level of You know, the hours of instruction is, is decided by the board. Yeah. Uh, the only thing we would need state approval for is like what Hudson did when they started early, before September 1st. Uh, they had to have state uh, DPI approval. Otherwise, how and when we structure our hours, as long as we meet the minimum hours, we're, we're good. And again, if you decide to do this, whatever format, uh, there's just a lot of communication and, and oh, information yeah. that has to get out. Uh, I mentioned this to our leadership group, to some teachers and what have you, and surprisingly, <laughs> yeah, we love it, you know. But we just have to get have a realistic approach on how we do this. Would so, it have to be, so, so if we bought four weeks, okay, could you put two at the front and two at the end to make it less disruptive for families rather than a month we, we could do we could do anything but the but would that be helpful is my question yeah, yeah. you know mm -hmm. time is time but it, it, i think that you know you're kind of disrupting two school year calendars that's more of a logistic question i think i'm hearing i'd rather see it on the front end and just okay one you know 
when we do this, and then as we go through, because we can't predict yeah, the weather. Yeah, we get a you blizzard know. in April. You know, that's we're not going to get a blizzard in August. That's okay. okay. Well, Here's I think we're yeah. But you know, we're set up also virtually that we can do some things too, that we're going to well, we pull purchase. everything, every rabbit out of our hat so we don't have to make up school. So the day, you know, the number of days that you're saving, when you say the 15 minutes buys us that, is that 15 minutes from the beginning of this school year, or is that Right, January? yeah. No, 15 minutes from, we would start <coughs> the school year, we'd lengthen out the day, and we'll have to, if, if the thought is of you know, the board that we want to look at this and go this route, you know, we'll start crunching numbers tomorrow, but I had to have the, we had to have this conversation to see if you had this, if you had the taste for that. Because again, there's a lot of things that have to fall in place to make this work. But the earlier we can give these guys the buildings and the grounds, you know, we quicker you can go one day. No, I understand that. Right. Can, you, know, can you do two sets? Can you do 50 minutes and and 50 minutes and plus removing spring break and do the 30 and then the 30 plus removing? Yeah. You know, it's right. roughly I have that. I'm roughly I have this right here, like uh, but I'd like to go back through it and, you know. It's August 18th. Oh. Oh. What's that? <laughs> yeah, I, I guess I would, be, well, how long do we have to make this decision? Because I want to talk to some families. Yeah, well, take as long as you want, but the sooner we get it in place, you know, the better better off we are. Uh, but the, the thought right now is we, there's a lot of advantages to one construction season. Oh, we, that's I think we agree on that. It's just how quickly we can turn over the buildings and the grounds to uh, Market Johnson to get this going. And again, personal experience, I'd rather give them to them as quick as we can in the spring, and then we have an opportunity to evaluate as we go through the summer to see, oop, they need another week here, or what have you. We make that decision in July. Do you yeah. agree that it would be more beneficial for the construction to have it up front in April or May? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of going more than 15 minutes yeah maybe 20 i would hate to yeah, see too. kids yeah. going 30 extra yeah. minutes 15 to 20 right? i don't do anything in the last half break. hour of school anyways 15 to 20 <laughs> and like it's spread out all right, all right. so you know, let's okay. keep going here yeah so uh, what i'd like to have and actually we have our building leadership teams meeting uh wednesday and so the last time they met last week I just said, hey, what do you think about this? Because I'm going to bring this up to the board because everyone's asking about construction and what's happening. And I mentioned, it, here's some scenarios that we may be looking at. And you know, construction in general, it's going to be disruptive this next year. It just, it's going to be, and we just have to get that message to everyone that we're going to look at some alternative situations here. But I did mention the getting out early and what have you. And I, <laughs> I've had people go, are we going to do this? Are we going to do this? I mean, they're, they're willing, they're willing the one season piece to make that sacrifice. Sure, but they probably would like more than two weeks notice. Yeah. Oh, definitely, definitely. That's why I say, as soon as we decide, the better. You know. um, so do we have more questions here for our presenters? Because this is a discussion we can have. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it, it is a great opportunity. And, and most of it can make some kind of uh, schedule considerations when it comes to summer projects like that, whether it's, you know, 30 minutes would be a, a really nice luxury. It's not that we'd be an extreme almost, I think, but um, playing with the start of school, the end of school, and hours of the day is, is a, a mix that you probably do want to have and try to maximize that, just, just so you're not getting into a pickle. You know, when we came in and uh, Dr. Bizek asked, you know, could it be done in one school, or one season, if you will, um, we just wanted to kind of just lay out all the, Kind of, I don't say pros and cons, but just all the kind of things that came to our mind when we did it. So a couple other things that are kind of keys. Um, it puts the pressure on wool of your architect. So not only do they got to get everything designed in order to bid it on time, um, that's probably the easy start uh, part of talking to, to Vaughn and the team. But all of a sudden, as we get going, we got questions, whether it's for George or, or them, the question's got to be answered like now, right? There's no time to kind of wait for a week for a, an RFI response or something like that. So. That's going to have to proceed, but in talking to them, I think everybody's on board there. Um, I talked about, you know, kind of, there's synergies of sharing resources, but there's also synergies of, of having kind of dedicated, uh, dedicated resource for each team to make sure they get done timely. So we've got some creative bid packages. Um, we probably are going to work some unique, uh, you know, work hours um, in order to get that done. Um, like Dr. Bizek did say, it does eliminate inflation, which is a huge, you know, if you figure, 
three, three and a half, four percent, depending on a given year on a project of this size. If you have half of it going into the next year, that's that's legitimate dollars, right? Um, it does put some stress, I think, just internally on the on the summer school program that one year because everything's going to be tore up. The one of the options that we showed, we said, well, how if we did the elementary school and the middle school one year and left the high school for the following summer, so you had one one project or one facility that wasn't being touched, you could kind of use that as home base or something. So, you know, that's still an option. But in this scenario, where everything's going to kind of be touched, which again is doable. It's just more more things on you know on the thinking block there. So these are kind of just some of the uh, some unique things that we came up with. We're probably going to need some additional storage um, as teachers. Um, both myself and Dustin are married to teachers, and we know that they're pack rats. And oh. there, yeah. Hogs. So, so <laughs> George, is like, you guys are not going to have enough room for everything. So we'll probably, you know, there's little things like that as we. Um, yeah, yeah, you'll have that, that type of thing. Um, and you know, we even talked about but we have temporary to have classrooms if you need to use those. So we've gone through all those thought process. Um, it may kind of minimize this, the move-in time frame. You may not have two weeks to do it. You know, it might be condensed a little bit. Um, and then, and this isn't a, a big deal because you don't have a lot of new facility, but you know, the new building, um, we like the facility staff to have some time to get in there and use the new systems and just kind of know how to operate the building. In this case, you don't have a lot of that, but it does put a little, uh, a little stress on, on the facility team to kind of be operating while kids are there and, and just dealing with but um, in this case, it's, it's probably not a huge, huge complex deal. Um, I think we covered most of the stuff. Safety is obviously huge. We talked about the alternative school um, schedule. Um, I know in watching your guys' school board meetings in the last couple of weeks here, there's been some talk about CM Constructor versus CM Agent. Um, obviously, we're a proponent of Constructor, mainly because you're putting the risk on us and not you guys. If you guys want the risk, we'd be happy to let you have it. So. Um, but really, at the end of the day, you have one contract with Mark and Johnson, and we'll have all the subcontracts. Versus in this project, if you were the CM agent, you would be having, oh, a hundred, I mean, hundreds, hundreds probably 150, 200 subcontracts between the four different projects. So, um, and if one of those goes bad, that all that burden's on you versus Colin and yelling at Kevin and I. So, um, it really is a, a, a benefit. It's it's uncommon for a school in Wisconsin to go CM. Agent, I don't know in our seventy years if we've ever, mm -hmm. I've never seen. Also scheduled to, you yeah. know, ultimately you're working hand in hand with all these subcontractors trying to get them to, you know, be here or there. And you know what? Ultimately, you're 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 making sure that a they're getting paid and b that they're doing their job. So I just it really feels you. like you have some yeah. good handles. See, in Minnesota, What's it's that? the rule, right? You have if you're going to be a construction manager, you have to be a CM agent. You can't. So it's just you know some mm -hmm. border wall difference across the river. Yep. Well. Yeah. Um, what else we got? A little bit of fee. Um, we try to keep it really simple. Everything happens on site. Material, labor, subcontracts. That's cost. We add 1.85 percent to it. That's what we our markup. Our hopefully uh, covers our overhead and hopefully we make a couple bucks at the end of the day. Um, and that's really as simple as it gets. We completely open book. As we go through this process, we'll come to the school board. You'll get copies of every bid that we receive. If you guys want to come in to the office on bid day and watch all the bids come in, we can open bids here. It's a very transparent process. Um, we won't award bids that day, right? We'll get them in there. We'll take probably a week or whatever to scope them all out, make sure all the I's are dotted and T's are crossed, and no fine. scopes missed or all that stuff. And then we'll bring them to you, you'll get copies of them all, and then you guys will approve every contract, and we'll just recommend, obviously we'll make our recommendations and stuff like that, right? Um, but you'll see all that stuff fully auditable, um, any cost savings. So when we do that, we come up with a guaranteed maximum price. That's the price ceiling. You guys already already have one with the, the referendum amount, but theoretically, obviously, it's going to be lower than that because you got cost in that referendum amount that's not brick and mortar, right? Um, so any savings from that guaranteed maximum price? Is returned back to the district 100%. Um, so it's pretty simple and straightforward. Um, we we'll use a simple AIA contract, which is an industry standard, and um, you know we don't edit it very much, so it's it's pretty straightforward. That's kind of it. Maybe in the budget thing too. We although we don't uh, procure some of your furniture and such, we like to track it on our budget sheet okay. just to make sure it's all 
encompass in the whole total number. Yeah, the, bud really the budget summary usually, you know, that's used as a whole total project financial tool. Um, so collaborative, collaboratively between the owner, um, architect, and us. So that that's gets filled up. Yeah, because if you go out well and spend too much on computers or whatever, the referendum amount doesn't change. So it's got to come out of some portion of the equation. So at the end of the day, yeah. there's a dollar yeah. figure. That's everything. That is it. Yeah. Yeah. Very good points. So that's it. Well, thank you. What questions can we ask? Or answer, I guess, not ask. Are you able to do any of the um, maintenance type work with the HVAC systems or hot water heaters or anything like that? For example, during Thanksgiving, vacation, Christmas, parade? Yeah, is that all worked into your schedule also? Yeah, there certainly could be um, some of that. We've got. Uh, we had a scenario where we showed the, the, the Nami High School. We remodeled that entire facility during the school year, so the whole twenty million dollar renovation was done during occupancy. Um, and so, yeah, there's there certainly could be some of that. Right now, the kind of the, the most aggressive schedule as far as is we're done before you know the school year starts. Um, I think just in in real you know realistically, we won't be done done. I mean, it will look done. George probably won't feel like it's done because there's going to be little things that we're here for a while um, during the school year tweaking, but hopefully the mass chaos is done and the school's staff and students don't feel like it's under construction. Maybe one thing to your question, Lori, is that, you know, as, as Lori mentioned, our big push right now is on the Wold because the Wold has to just, has to get everything ready for bid once they bid it. And I would say realistically, They'll probably be able to like spring break, maybe tear down a few things because oh, the yeah. packages will be out. Yeah, and, yeah. And that'll be our. We'll take thing. any any little window we can and try to maximize that. So things getting into Christmas this year no, are, are not like, possible no. because of the bid. No, no, that's better used for pre-planning, oh, phasing yeah. plans. If anything, I, we did have the secure entries already engineered and everything to go. With. Those possibly on the elementary school could be worked on over it Christmas. Could be, it certainly could be some school for the yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean even like it. Ensuring that everything gets bid so you have a contractor on board before spring break. Even something as simple as like, you know, maybe getting a ceiling out here or there so you can kind of see what's going on and, you know, really hammering out the game plan for the summer is a big deal. Yeah. So it's not like if we did stuff over spring break, it wouldn't be super intensive, but there'd definitely be things, people yeah. taking advantage of that yeah. time. We only unfortunately have four months from now until the end of the year to get those drawings completed. Right. And site investigations. A lot of stuff crammed in that time. Yeah. So again, a lot of our, I, I talked to Vaughn today. He's on board, but he said you are putting us under under a wrench because it takes time for them to design and spec out everything and prepare bid documents. And really, what we'd like but, to do in that same time frame is get fully engaged in the plans and specs. Really start working <coughs> on pre-construction, budgeting, and everything else, and our pre-plan so we can hit the ground running. You know, like I said. You know, it might seem like chaos, but it's a, it's organized. We gotta we gotta plan it from A to Z kind of deal. So we jump all all head in <coughs> kind of deal. So the action we're asking for tonight is to approve Market Johnson as our uh, construction managers pending. Uh, uh, we don't have a contract yet, uh, so they'll be. Working. We have one right here. <laughs> <laughs> we got you down for the food for thought. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, but we'll That's approve them call. as our construction manager pending uh, the outcome of a contract, and Trevor will get that contract, uh, and he's going through our contract right now. And this is a big one, so. Uh, so do we have anyone interested in making that motion? I will. Thank you, Catherine, and a second. second. Thank you. So do we have any other further questions? And I would ask all to, in favor, to signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Welcome. We are so happy to be working with you. Thank you. Super excited. Patty Joel? Did you have any questions, Patty yeah. Joel? No? I did not. Great. Good job. I'll get to work. Right Thank next you. Good <laughs> luck. We knew, we knew it was a good sign, so after the first interview, we went to lunch over at the sports place. And Ryan won 250 bucks on the pool. Right? Oh my yeah. god! <laughs> and I was there too, and they didn't find me lunch. <laughs> you didn't want to seem like we were sucking up to you. Yeah. Everyone makes you find lunch. You're not going to I don't think that. Yeah. Yeah. You're really lucky to get to work with George, too. Yeah, amen. Yes. Yes. Um, yeah. Before you go, when you were talking about spring break, would you 
Mark was talking about eliminating spring break well, to get yeah. done, but you were also talking yeah. about using spring break. I think we use that. Do you have a preference? We'd rather have the weeks continue. Yeah, continuous yeah if you sure. eliminated it and you gave us a week on the construction That'd schedule. That'd be more valuable. Absolutely. Yes. Um, but if there's small windows we can take advantage of, and like Brian alluded to, sometimes sometimes doing a little bit of exploratory in those time frames is really good too, right? Checking you know where piping runs, everything else are, so we can, you know, we're more informed when we get started kind of deal. So we'll utilize any time to give us kind of. Yeah, and you have teaching service days when yeah. students aren't everywhere. Uh -huh. so they still so we'll have, we'll have subcontractors and our team coming in. You know, there's always a duration that's really in the building. So what's going where, what's, you know, what's behind walls and stuff like that. If we can do that and not waste the time while we're going, in, you know, a game bus or this or that. But yeah. back to your question, if you, you gave me an option of keep spring break and use, utilize that time mm -hmm. right to the construction schedule during the summer, I'd much rather have it on the construction schedule. Yeah. Okay. Kind of going back all the way to the bidding part, if you look at our schedule, um, you know, one of the things we wanted to take advantage of is you know, getting out for bidding right after Christmas and New Year's is maybe when the kids are gone, you know, in their Christmas break, was you know having a contractor open house to check things out so people can familiarize themselves with the buildings and that just ensures a more accurate bid, a more confident bid. Oh, what a good um, idea! Yeah. So that really helps too. Good to know. Okay. Is there right. any way you can shrink that down? And if you said that, oh, we can shrink that. We can make it. Was that too big for you to read from there? <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say the same thing. Yeah, so the that's schedules it. will get much more complex than that, too, yeah. by the way. Yeah, it's, I, uh, thought, I saw that. I thought it was Braille at first. Yeah. yeah. I can't see it at all. No. So each schedule, that each project will have a schedule that's probably three to four of those long. Yeah. Kind of when it's all said and done. So you'll have probably 15 of those boards when it's actually laid out. But this is just the general scope. Yeah, this right? is just kind of the big milestone. Is it is it possible to get done in this time frame? Yes. And then it's going to get down to day by day what has to happen. Yeah, so when the flooring guy bids it, he knows his window of opportunities from here to there. He can assess how many guys he needs. We can uh -huh. kind of scope him out, so to speak, to make sure. You know, and that's one example kind of yeah. deal. So. And then you'll have, as board members, you'll have access. So everything's um, on a basically on a site specific or project website specific uh, site for you. Oh. So you'll have access to everything. Budgets, meeting minutes, project nice. photo, daily project pictures, all the schedules, all that kind of jazz. You'll have access to all that. And then, like, and then right off your, off your We board. like to come to the, uh, we updates at the, you know, the board meetings kind of deal. We do a little placement. Here's, here's what we did the last, you know, X amount of time. Here's what we got coming up. You know, here's synopsis of the budget, some pictures, do drone flyovers, you know, stuff like that. A lot of times tours right before school board meetings. Yes. Nice. So. Awesome. Well, that sounds good. Good way to stay calm. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Thank you. Thanks, guys. Look yeah. forward to working out. Thank you. You as well. Likewise. So, a little discussion here. Uh, you know, again, coming not knowing what's in the stomach for and what we want to do. Uh, you know, we've got some loose scenarios here just with, you know, what adding certain minutes would do. Uh, what do you need to feel comfortable about making a decision uh, as far as a time frame and what information would you like me to get for you so you can... Can I just ask why we were talking about this back in June? As far as the schedule going on, uh, up to that point in time, we thought it was going to be a two a two season construction project, and it wasn't until the bids we, came. Actually, in. it wasn't until they came in and said, you know, well, why aren't you thinking about one one season? It wasn't until the last interviews that that came up. Okay. And none of the other no nobody did. And came up. you know, one thing about them, I was very impressed with. Uh, I talked to them about some other bids that we'd have received and they were the only ones that came back within a couple days said here and it had to do with our surveys and he saved they saved us half the cost on uh, what was recommended before uh, and from what I've heard from the other schools that they've done work with this is the way they operate and we're gonna find better cost savings by staying on the side of the river as much as we can that yeah we just are so I I would like three options or four mm -hmm. options like if we take 15 minutes off and we take spring break off that would look like this okay. if we take 20 minutes off and no spring break that would look like this and 
and maybe one extreme. Can, yeah, can I you don't ask know. too about the two different uh, next taking part of this year, part of next year, Ex starting next year later? That should be one comes, option. Because the only reason I say that is because in the spring, and we're saying, all right, you're going to start April 30th. That's miserable. I mean, it's, mm -hmm. we, we want to start, and they're going to say it, and I'm going to say it the same thing, but it's the worst time to work. It's muddy, it's slow, it's, unless you get a good spring, which yeah. last well, few years we have. The, the good part, of part, you know, most of this work is interior, mechanical, what have you. So, like, you, you know, so the more they can tear into these buildings, because, you know, yeah. you look at the middle school and high school, they're going to tear those things apart. Inside yeah. the walls. It's not yeah. new construction. So we got very little outside new footprint right at, at this point in time. Uh, I was very specific with them that we need the activities end of the high school open so we have access to the gym and the weight room, no problem because there's nothing going on at that end of the building and access to the fields. The elementary you know, will definitely be packing that with summer school because the, the major thing is the roof, which you know, again, you know, that's exterior. And there is some mechanic, but not as heavy as the other buildings. So, the but things, the rest is the entryway. Right, and and the entryway is not come a lot. In other ways in the summer. Yeah, the entryway is not a lot on on that building. Uh, I guess a couple of things that that I really you know, knowing that we want to look at an option here, is just strategizing uh, administratively with uh, you know talking with the teachers again. Uh, you know, the leadership teams. I'll be talking to them tomorrow or on Wednesday. But also start having discussions with you know broader groups, and I think is if you have communication with uh, community members or families, what have you, kind of get a feel for this. And other big concerns can be good here, because it will be, and so that's one thing that we'll have to strategize on how do we expand the summer school program to meet those needs of families that need daycare. Uh, I will also start checking around. Uh, to some of the other facilities around here, churches, what have you, that can house some of these programs. So maybe some of these expanded programs we take off campus. And also look at some options for teacher contracts and just how we na need to navigate that. So, uh, you know, when the kids are done, they're done basically. Or if we do have some staff development days, you know, that can play into it too, you know, off campus or what have you. I, it's too early to tell, but I just, I would like to play with those things. Uh, to give you an idea of what we what we could do if that's what we want to do when construction How we season. Present it to other people too is a big sell for it. So if we're positive about hey this is a one summer deal, and if we're able to the the construction will go much more smoothly rather than I'm concerned if we give up two yeah if we start saying those stress and those pros rather than okay we need three different options, I get a little concerned if we start to offer them we're not going to get everybody happy. No, I just want the options for sure. us. You know, and okay. I'll pro I can, if yeah. that's what, I'll provide that for you, and then what would next year look like if we had to start a week late? I'd just yeah. like to see hard dates yeah. so I can yes. see if we're going to have spring break and actually, you know, have it that then the school's not going to have it two weeks later. Yeah, and it's so because then it's might as well. Right. Work. They, they'd rather have it in one chunk rather than separating it. I think a big. Uh, motivator for the community is if we only disrupt summer school one summer that will be a big positive i think so too and well. and saving money it's going to save money and agreed but i'm not good with starting it in two weeks you know that's without just giving people enough time that's not enough time for yeah, and, and, you know, what, whatever time you need because we would just add you know if we started in october right you know that's then so it, maybe it goes from 15 to 20 minutes you know, I, just whatever we decide. But that's let me what be, I would recommend. Let me to play out a couple scenarios time. because I think we need to do a, a huge communication piece on this. Yeah. Yep. We just do. It. Well, they have people have to plan. They have to plan, to plan their schedules. Well, right. Like a tenant graduate or two. <coughs> yeah, I don't maybe. think that's as, the, as the getting as the up weather up. got worse. Um, extending the day, the most. I can't imagine. We extended the day this year by 15 minutes and did it all at once. People don't usually have a problem when you extend the school day. It's when you cancel yes. the school. Extending the school day, 15 to 20 minutes is not going to upset. No, people have happens. jobs. It matters. And they have to drop their kids off sometimes. So but they would just drop up. They still drop them off. But extending doesn't impact as badly. So um, we know what we're looking for. You're going to show I, us all you three. Know, I, I do. I just, again, just we need to have this discussion so I know what to And give, when do give we need to, to make the decision? 
soon as possible. Well, yeah. I'll get this information out to you by the end of the week. I will get this, this stuff out as far as some options. To and you. would we have to have a special session to approve it? Or is it just a session anyway? Yeah, we're going to. Well, yeah. yeah. Again, that's another piece that when you talk about conversation here, we'd like to schedule another work session or retreat or what have you so we can tackle the next phase of compensation. And we can talk about this also. So we can have those, those two items on. And I'm pretty sure by Friday I could have some scenarios knocked out for you uh, on what this would look like and kind of a communication idea. Because again, you know, we got back to school coming up here. You know, if we had some, if we were pretty focused on what we wanted to do, those would be perfect nights to get in front of people to let them know that, hey, here's what's happening. I will say too, last Friday we just sent out a district-wide communication to families with welcome back information from each of the buildings. And we did put a little blurb in there that you know, we're finalizing a construction firm, whatever, <coughs> should changes need to be made to accommodate the construction season, it will be communicated. So there was a little like, pretty the nugget in their brain, so to speak, but without a ton of detail because we didn't have it. So if you could get those options to us quickly, that would be great because I would like to check with my neighbors and my friends and find out what, yeah. what options they want. And it's not that we would have to have a, a finalized piece because the, the <coughs> Back to school is next week, mm -hmm. but I would like to get in front of people and just say, "Hey, here's some things we're looking yeah. at." And so, just so be heads up, you know, what have you? So October. So we won't jump ahead because we we aren't going to be meeting at next week, 26. Then we've got Labor Day, so our next meeting is the ninth. So do are we saying we're going to meet before that? Does that give you sufficient time? Well, it, it gives me sufficient time to get you the information. I'll have you some of these scenarios here this week, but. That actual decision making, what you feel comfortable with, when and you feedback. That. You know, again, if we the later we start, the more we'll have to increase to get whatever results we want. Um, okay. So, what so do you guys think? let me just play out a couple of scenarios. Uh, but how do we approve it? So we'll put it together the same night. As, if we're going to be doing more on conversation, we'll do them the same night. Are we going to try and do that over the next month, or are we going to do that in October? Well, what's that? The oh no! I put that's get be that as, we as, as, we as, as soon as possible. Can uh, we so meet the twenty sixth next Monday? Monday? Monday, I can't. Oh. Okay. Otherwise, any Tuesday. other night in the week, I can. Monday. Tuesday's open house. How about Wednesday the twenty eighth? No, I can't. How about Thursday the twenty ninth? I could. I mean, this I, is getting nuts with all the meetings. I'm sorry. I'm I'm out. You're out. I'm out. If we're gonna meet next week, I'm out. I'm not coming to another meeting. Just I'm, I, I, I'm not. It's been everybody, everybody else can this meet. month. <laughs> I can't. I am burnt out. Not could just with this, but could we work. Could, it's could we do a compensation meeting this Wednesday? Yeah. We won't be able to touch the, I'm, the I'm, minutes thing. I'm just looking for a time. If everybody can do it Tuesday. I just don't like things waiting for the last. So I'm a little aggravated that we have compensation and all this other stuff coming down the pipeline. We need to have. Other additional meetings. It just it's just a little bit of. But uh, then, yeah, next otherwise Thursday they're very long. So, sounded like next Thursday could work for some. Uh, I'm open Monday, Wednesday, Mercury. Thursday, Mercury. Thursday the 29th to finish off our compensation discussion and also to give a go ahead confirmed. Um, I, I, that's that's. I, I'm just going to object to having a, a, a compensation meeting on Thursday. Why? So, are because you more comfortable putting it to the ninth and when we're doing our committee meetings? Well, that's isn't fine. the annual it's meeting? To, if we have yeah, a forum, we can meet. But the ninth is also the annual meeting. Because we don't typically meet on Thursdays. We typically meet on, on the Mondays. first and yep. third Mondays of the month, like our calendar has that we sit down and do. And that's all I'm going to say. So, if we meet, we can get some of the dates. From and decide on the dates that Mark is going to present us with, and then that would give us time to talk to our neighbors and friends before September 9th. So, do we want to tackle both things on the 9th? Yeah. Okay. Oh, wait a minute. 
you want to tackle compensation and this construction thing on the ninth? That, that's what I'm hearing. No, he's going to send out the construction ahead of time, which will get um, probably yeah. by the end of the week. Yeah, I'll, which I'll will give you time to talk it over with your neighbors or whomever you would like to get their thoughts on. Then, as a board, we can decide. On the ninth, then we'll back up everything to like an October start with right. the extended minutes. But what about the compensation? We'll tackle that on the ninth. We yeah. have the annual meeting. The annual meeting. Yeah, yeah, I'd rather not add that to that one as well. So there, we have a lot of balls that we're juggling. Yeah, yeah but I, I agree with Bob. I I like you guys, well, but four times in one month is a lot. <laughs> can we? vote on it? You sure can. Okay, I'd like to make a motion that we have a special session on Thursday the 29th. Thursday the 29th of August? Yes. I'll second it. Is that part of our thing that wasn't on our agenda? No, it wasn't on the agenda. Well, I, I, I want to get it done too. I want to get it done. I don't, what happened is we're going to show up at the meeting and we're not going to finalize it and then we're going to meet again. To go through it again. I would like to finalize compensation. I think we owe it to our employees. Me too. And, and we've we've got all the stuff. We've all we've looked at it yeah. over and over again. So are we going to go with well, August night, August twenty sixth? I'll do the twenty sixth. I'm not going. Through that. How about Monday the twenty sixth? Her motion was for the 29th. We need four people. So do you want to do a who was the second party? You came the 29th, you did not the 26th? I can't either. Okay, thank you. And either for you? Yeah, if you, if you, can, if you need to do the 26th, I'll cancel my plan. I, I will. I, I mean, I'll. I can't on the 26th. Okay, we're going to do the 29th. The motion's for the 29th. Roll call. I say I can make the 29th. Yes, I approve the 29th. Me too. Okay. Um, Bob? No. Nope. Uh, Catherine? Yes. Lori? Yes. Um, Patty Joe, the 29th is okay? Yep. Yes. Yeah. All right. Sure. So um, we've got six. Does that can make the 29th work. We will go with the 29th. At what time? At what time? 630. Um, okay. 630 okay Whatever. with you, Patty Whatever. Joe? Whatever. Yeah, Patty Joe. Six is all right. Would six be too early? Nope, I can do any time. All right, let's go with six. So our goal for the 29th will be to wrap up compensation and to get a feel, get a confirmation to Dr. Bizek on the schedule proposed. Well, if you can get it that early, but I think you, I, I, it sounds like you're not going to be comfortable making a decision on this until like September 9th. Well, right, but we uh, can talk about okay. it. Okay, yeah, well, we'll put both on the agenda. Are we going to have? <clears throat> on that contract, we talked about full session for that one. What are we doing? Okay, so it, the next thing on here is like my part on it. I was just going to talk a little bit about compensation just to kind of frame up that meeting because you know what we've, what we've done so far is, uh, or did you have so we are meeting on the 29th? Yes, yes. okay, so that's set and voted on that. Okay, yeah, so, okay, so what I have here notes compensation, you know, we have. Uh, what we've agreed to so far is we've got uh, three pretty solid rules here. Uh, nobody gets more than five years experience coming in the district without board approval. Uh, they must have five years in the district to be eligible for the market adjustment piece. Uh, hires after August 1st, uh, 2016 are not eligible for an adjustment. Uh, the, the other one that I had that was maybe a tentative rule or maybe something you want to look at is that people that are moving from four to five are not eligible for any other market adjustment because they're moving to market adjustment. Uh, that might, it, it, it may or may not be an issue. Uh, the discussion that we had, now you've already dealt with uh, the market adjustment piece and it, the new teacher piece. The other ones that are on the table to talk about are the administrators market adjustment, uh, the expanded grid model, and uh, the support staff market adjustment model. You, you, know, you sent out that new grid and what basically what we have to do is come up with rules around those so that we can start doing the, the number crunching exactly because every one of them had 
the different rules that we had to look at. So we'll be looking for rules on the support staff and supervisory support staff piece and that expanded grid model for the discussion. That's the one with the years of experience and what have you. You mean dealing with the discrepancies? Right, yeah. So we need rules around that. Okay, but we're using the same rules. We, we are, but they're, we just have to agree on how they're enforced in that because gotcha. there's some, you know, some wiggling pieces like this. That I understand. I just want, want to make sure, and the way they were prepared is by the rules that we have, except for that expanded model one because that's that's a whole different animal. Okay. You know, than the other ones are. So, just so we, that's what we're going to discuss at that meeting. So when we walk out of there, hopefully, you should know. We should know exactly what, uh, you know, how we're tweaking the numbers. And then we can hopefully have an action on the ninth. Yep. Yes. That's the purpose. Yeah. I don't want to have a discussion on it on the ninth and then have a discussion the next week. No. Nope. Right. So, so we should be able to have something guaranteed. Well, go ahead. Okay. All right. We can try. Mm -hmm. So we'll, um, do we have any other questions for Dr. Beasley? Thanks, Bob. Yep. Um, financial, then we're on to did, uh, did that cover your Yeah, that's, that's yeah, okay, mine I'm was sorry. all over the map. I was kind of, so. yeah, we kind of rolled right into it. Any questions on the financial reports for B? Then let's move to 4C, Bridging Somerset. Do you have anything, Kath, or anybody? Have that's anything not else? meeting at this time. No. Okay. I left my notes on CISA 11. Uh, there are a lot of opportunities that I think we already take advantage of as a school for training uh, professional development. I think we're already working with them quite a bit. Um, I'm sorry, I should have grabbed my notes. I left it right on the side of my desk there. I remember <coughs> that. Community education, Catherine? Yep. Uh, the calendar's out. Yeah, the, that's the great. Calendar I did. It? Got it. Fantastic. Yes, it is. I can't get over it. I mean, it is fantastic, and I yeah. love. It's great having all the stuff the on pictures it. and 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 the, the site improvement. I mean, wow! I I, I think it's, it's really the best nice. one I've ever seen, and I love how the, it's all the pictures with the explanation of what they're doing on the bottom. Yeah, I like this too. Yeah, I think it's really spectacular. The board meeting times are right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's good. So, um, and uh, Renee said that. Uh, She'll be working on community ed classes here coming up. That's her next task. Great. All right. Um, employee council. Um, we need to get another meeting. We we've had a lot going on in August. So what about the restructuring of it? How does that? Yeah, well, play that's into what we've. We haven't met since to talk about it. I think I, I think that I should appreciate be, that. I, I think that should be a board discussion. Don't you? How to restructure that? Yeah. Well, we already had that discussion. Well, we not did. really. Yeah. Was I gone? No, you kind of let it. <laughs> well, we I talked about restructuring it formally. That we wanted to, but not But we haven't decided what how we want to have it. Like, who's represented, who's on. We talked about, um, I don't know if that's one of the meetings that got videoed or not, but we did talk about that and having representative participation from every group. That's well, already what we're doing. So we yeah. want to have, but it doesn't seem to be playing out that way. Well, that's what I think. Well, it depends on what's on the agenda. <laughs> and that agenda yet, that's all. What, I'm sorry, what? Since that discussion, that that employee council has not met. And it depends on, the, on what's on the agenda. Some, for some group, if there's stuff on the agenda that doesn't affect I'm their teacher. Then they don't tend to show up. That's what I said, but if, there, if the only thing on the agenda was teacher compensation, me and support staff, I likely wouldn't go because right, I don't really have a foot in that door. You know, I don't have a reason Do to. Do you remember what meeting that was at? It was well, fairly Catherine, recent. Yeah, it, Catherine just brought it up. But we probably did, the last one. We didn't really have a discussion on what we each thought that we thought that that council was. I would like it to be at a work session because I would, I would like the administrators to have some input too on who, what, what should the makeup of this employee council be? How many people? Who should be represented? What's the goal of it? Yeah. I wanted more I, of that. Yeah, I don't. And I've had a couple employees come and say they don't know who's on it, and they're not sure what what it is either. And I'm I have to wait for the new school year to start. But I would like it on a work session to just make it more formal. Well, I think that was the discussion on the goal of is to change the format of it. 
Yes. Because again, it just started out as kind of an information sharing gathering. We tried to get someone from every employee group and a number of people from every building. So it was well representative, represented. But after two or three meetings, people stopped coming. Right. You know, and so again, we have well, to we look at ways to. We weren't having the consistent, we talked yeah, about Yeah, we did. And, and it got to be the same people, which is fine, because I use it as a sounding board yeah. and what have you to gather information. But, uh, but if we want to be more, we'll have to lay, you know, look now, at some. Now, did you have something similar to this at Elk River? Um, no, over there we had meat prefer. No, we had a. Call yeah. over there now. Yeah. They've got something different now. The county does. It's their staff advisory committee. Yeah. And, well, and it's. But the board's not in charge of it. Yeah. No. Like I, a steering yeah. committee, an employee yeah, steering committee type uh, thing. Every district had something different. You know, we had our collaborative leadership group, but that was all, you know, I sat with 50 administrators. Yeah, you know, yeah, at my level, the, I did that. They have a steering so, committee now. But I can ch I check around and see. But you know, the employee council is a great concept in that if I, I think there, we have to look at when we host it. Yep. And you know, if there, if we want to put some incentives to that, you know, people are busy after school. You know, they just are. And you know, there's a lot of meetings going on. We have coaches, so we're very limited in the people that. They want to be there, but yeah. it also have they have to feel like their voice is valued, and it's a and it's a subject that like she said that she really yeah. cares about and uh, and it's always been advisory in nature not decision making well right. we should be consistent and uh, in my opinion so this really wasn't on the agenda this way but what I'm saying but I would like it on a work session yeah. but it's something else you're going to have well is that later. if we have them for example monthly and there's a consistent sure. in time and but you're never going to get everybody because as Tasia said if the topic doesn't include everybody they may not wish to be at that particular yep. one so let's have this discussion at a work session yep. i would like that too okay so we'll put it on possibly the october or the november work sure. sessions um anything so from the memorial uh, scholarship our early? first meeting for the new school year is on uh, wednesday which i think is september 6th you guys have to get your time uh i'm sorry uh the fourth Um, did we miss anything? Bruce, anything we should know about the construction from your perspective? We'll be waiting on wool. That's going to be our... Yeah. Uh, did you have anything you wanted to share with us in open forum? All right, so we're going to scoot right over to 6, Advanced Services and Operations, to recommend the school board approve. I'm looking for a recommendation. The school board approve the coach <coughs> and advisory handbook as presented. So moved. Second. Thank you, Lori. Thank you, Catherine. Do we have any questions on that? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion carries um, approval of the 20, uh, 1920 Coach Advisory Handbook. On to the consent agenda. Um, I will make a motion that we approve the minutes of the July 22nd regular session. Do I have a second? I'll second. All right. So on the, we have a motion on the floor to recommend approval of the minutes of the July 22nd regular session. Do we have any questions or uh, uh, corrections to be made on that one? All right, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries on the approval of the July 22nd minutes. On to a two. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes of the August 5th work session. Do I have a second? I'll second. Thank you, Lori. Thank you, Katie. Do we have any questions on that one? Yes. On the August 5th minutes, it's um, there's a motion about the health and dental insurance renewal. And during that meeting, um, Bob brought up the extra $300 and $600, and I added that to the motion, but I apologize. It was while Tasia was already, you know, writing the motion, so it didn't get in there. So I would like to amend 
that motion to read uh, recommend the school board approve the health and dental insurance renewal with health partners health insurance and health partners dental insurance and the $300 slash $600 district funded HRA decrease due to IRS rule changes as presented at the July 22nd meeting. What's the cost on that? Well, we already did it. That was, I, I, I recall Bob. Unfortunately, it's one of the meetings that didn't get taped, so we can't go back and look, but Bob did oh. bring that up, and I did amend the motion, or add it to the motion. And I just wanted it reflected in the minutes for clarification. It's just clarifying. It's not yeah. changing anything. Yeah. Exactly. That is what was presented at the 22nd. Right. You're just clarifying, and I'm okay with seconding that same thing. Yeah. Clarification. You're just, that's fine. So what will it add now to this? Can you please say it again? Uh-huh. Um, as a matter of fact, I can send it to you because I have it on a document. That would make it easier, I bet. Doesn't surprise me in the least. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to forward it to Marie, um, Catherine, um, Katie. Well, oh, I don't need it. Patty Jo and Bruce. Can and you read it to me? Bob Gunther and Tasia already has it, and I think Mark does too. Mm -hmm. So could you read it to me? Mm -hmm. So the motion would say um, exactly as it is already, except there's a little addition. So it would say, recommend the school board approve the health and dental insurance renewal with health partners health insurance and health partners dental insurance and the $300 slash $600 district funded HRA decrease due to IRS rule changes as presented at the July 22nd meeting. Yeah, I wanna, in my head, I gotta figure out how that, what that's actually saying. So the saying. district puts in less, less money. So it's not. And we didn't have a choice. It was an IRS We had an change. option had to choose. Decrease, HRA, decrease. Correct. Or district or the yep. Yep. Sorry. Was it add deductible with the okay. other option? Correct. Correct. All right, so we have an emotion. The emotion is amended by Lori to include. No, no. The minutes are amended. amended. Excuse Correct. Me. Thank you. By Lori. The minutes are amended to reflect what Lori meant and Catherine has seconded that? Correct. So uh, those here, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? And I don't know, Katie Jo, did you, are you okay with that? I don't know if you were on the first motion or not. I was at a meeting, let's see, July 22nd. You were probably not with us. <laughs> I was not with you. Okay. <laughs> so we're good, all right. So, all right, thank you for clarifying that. District funded. HRA decrease due to an IRS rejoinder. Very good. All right, was there anything else on that one? No. All right, then. So that one's good. Are we on the next one, then A3? I make a motion to approve the August 12th minutes. And do I have a second? Second. Thank you, Katie. Do we have any additions or changes to that one? Yes, please. And they're in the document that I already forwarded to you. It's just for clarification, the first one. Um, L. Bullargen moved to use the market grid Exhibit A with the exception of those with a higher date of August 1st, 2016 or later. The second was by Forsberg. Discussion ensued to clarify those hired after August 1st, 2016. I just wanted to add that sentence to we had this discussion and I just wanted to make it clear that employees hired prior to August 1st, 16, with five or more years of experience will be placed on the grid at step five, the market rate, because it just talks about the market, you know, it doesn't explain fully. Those employees hired after August 1st, 2016 will be placed on the grid at the step closest to their current salary without going lower. 
Okay, I think that's expanding that motion a bit more than what we, we really It had goes into the discussion because the sentence in front of that says discussion and so to clarify. And so this is adding to the discussion, not the motion. I don't really, I think it's beneficial to have that kind of detail in, in the minutes regarding something like this. I just, Especially I, if you look at the one above, Marie, it says discussion ensued to clarify those hired after August 1st, 2016. Those employees will be placed on the grid without going lower. Mm -hmm. So those employees, it is vague and it creates confusion in my opinion. So my concern is this, it is not the motion that was made, it's the discussion portion. And when it's not the motion, it doesn't carry the same weight. So I don't want the interpretation of what the discussion was to overpower what motion was actually made. That's a concern for but me. But this is about, this is not about. So I think the motion would have to be brought back. If, if, if you're not comfortable with it as the motion is written there, I don't like adding to the discussion interpretation. And that's okay. what I'm reading that as. Well, that's my, that's my amendment. And I would like to talk about this one before we go to the next one. Yeah, I wanna. So that's my, what I would like to I'll actually on. second the amendment because she's not amending the motion. She's just saying, let's do this to better clarify in that discussion. Did you portion. say you just sent it to me? There, it just came through. And I think it's uh, when you try to look back <laughs> and say, what did we do? <laughs> Sometimes it's best to have that detail. Wait a minute, I don't have it. Did you maybe send two things? No, nope, it's one know. document. They're all on the same page, Mary. Is it an attachment? Because it's created from the top. Or maybe you put I, it I'm not in favor of changing it. <coughs> okay. In the August 12th minutes, would you please change? I just found it, yep. I, I'm, I'm still uncomfortable with it. Well, that's okay. So we've got a we can hold first on and a motion in, uh, to amend and a second to that. Mm -hmm. So, Bruce, um, if right now I'm hearing a split, so what would you like yeah. to see there, Bruce? What are you comfortable with? Um, just leave it as it was. As Tasia had it. Yes. I, I and if. I just feel more comfortable with that. If it were a motion and we needed to change that, I can see it. If it's a discussion, I'm not comfortable with that. Okay, so are you well, gonna finish the vote? Yeah. Um, so what I'm hearing three not in favor of the supporting. Did I misinterpret Bruce's? Because you had said you were not. Oh, I, I'm not in favor of changing that. I'm okay. not in favor of the motion. Amendment fails. No. Okay, so the motion Thank you. to amend fails. Now I see some yellow on yep. there. And then I would also like to uh, make a, uh, an amendment to the motion that Bruce made. Um, Katie is the person who seconded that motion. Which one is it? How far down? Um, it's the third item. August 12th, it's in the second item. Bruce Belargen, the way the minutes read now, it says Bruce Belargen moved to use the market grid exhibit B as presented. Mm -hmm. Motion carries. I'd like to amend the minutes to state Bruce Belargen moved to use the market grid exhibit B as presented, seconded by Thermos. Those Cold. employees will be placed on the grid at step five, the market rate. Say that again. Well, I see it, yeah, okay. but yeah, but you want to change it to what? Well, isn't doesn't the yellow come through on yours, or am I not? Am I at a bad angle? Mm -hmm. Read um, it again. So, the amendment is Bruce Belargen moved to use the market grid exhibit B as presented, seconded by Thermos, which wasn't in the minutes. Oh yeah, the second has to be in there. And those employees will be placed on the grid at step five, the market rate. 
So that part is the part that I, I'm grateful that we have thermos to add to that. Yep. And I would have always called you thermos, so I apologize. <laughs> um, but I am uncomfortable with the, those employees will be placed on the grid at a step five, the market rate. To me, that again is changing the interpretation or interpreting the motion, the motion. rather than the, the motion that's there. And those employees is, is very vague. It doesn't say who those is. I think, so. and that's that's the part I wanted to get clarified, is that it says exhibit A, exhibit B, exhibit C. You want to go Katie has no, or not Katie, Kathy has no idea which A, B, or C right. compared to the people sitting right at the meeting that we were going through. Right. Exhibit A is the, well, we were having trouble in the meeting figuring out which was exhibit A, B, and C. Yeah, because I was With the brown that. section, exhibit B, so it's those great. employees refers to the employees mm -hmm. in the blue, light blue section here of counselors is what it is. And I, I guess I don't have a problem with saying on the grid at step five, I understand. I said the market grid, which to my mind meant this column that said McGrath market rate. Mm -hmm. That's what I meant as market grid. To change it to say market step five, to me, doesn't change changing. what it meant it's just it's, it's just saying make sure that they're at step five but i guess i just looked at this was we were approving this exhibit b is what i guess my motion was and without this sheet and i don't know how we can put this in there if we can somehow to say that oh i'm sure Tasia has exhibit a is the brown exhibit b as referred to here would be this and exhibit c is this other light blue i know my crude mm -hmm. drawings <laughs> <laughs> don't help, but I have the same one on my desk. I mean, I, I think we were all doing the same thing at the meeting to try to figure out without yeah, this, because with those employees, it would be those are the exhibit A employees. So we have the ability to pull it out into a separate PDF and link it. I don't know if it makes sense to link it to the minutes. I oh, think yeah. the trouble that I was having is that I don't have an agenda item to link them to because. Right. We didn't have. I don't even put it as page two. I give you my notes. notes. I have. I mean, I have all those notes, and we oh. can pull out from the spreadsheet that they were printed just a certain section. I just don't know where you'd want them attached to, because no. we typically don't make attachments to the minutes. No. I mean, I, I don't know. However, we can refer to A, B, and C because I mean, I think everyone. I mean, if you weren't there and it wasn't video, you don't know. And that's. Yeah, it wasn't video. So, I mean, well, I, somehow we have to show that what Exhibit A is. We do. <laughs> we absolutely I mean, do. Sorry, I guess we... Well, except we, that... Well, I don't know. Um, yeah, what do we call these when we get them handouts, you know, when you're trying and to... And they really are information. They are not necessarily, you know, for, for everyone public. there. So... Okay, but this is about the minutes, so. Yeah, but this, these are for, I mean, my, yeah, I don't know. I guess I don't know how you put them on there, but I. I well, are we in agreement that the second by thermos needs to be amended? Right, yeah. I'm not in agreement to add anything else. I'll make a motion that well, we can just. can we vote yeah. on the motion? Well, no one seconded it, Lori. Yeah, Katie did. Katie did. I didn't hear that. So, um, I heard her second the other one. Oh, this okay. is on your amend, you're wanting to add the yellow to it. So, Bruce, are you in favor of adding the discussion points past the addition of therms? Yeah, I'm, I will add those. That, that or thermos. <laughs> thermos and those employees. Or two. I'm sorry. Placed I'm so on the sorry. grid so. at step five. I'm fine with that. That's, I mean, I made the motion, that's what I meant. Okay. Or to me. All right. So rather than adding it to after that, like it's a discussion, do you want to put it into your motion there? I think it's fine like it is. I don't have any problem. I mean, we were all in agreement. this is what it was that night, but I understand coming back later, it might be a little tougher to decipher. Right. But I think that's why they don't want you changing these motions after the fact in the minutes. Yeah. I think that's the whole point. Because it can I, be misinterpreted then again. Uh, it's usually That's why we should re um, state our motion. Yep. Yeah, we should read them back. Yep. Mm -hmm. I think so too. But even then, we might have missed it. But even the time, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Somehow, I just, I don't know. Maybe we can't, but I, 
somehow I want to get this sheet as an attachment or something into the minutes, minutes to show that we have exhibits. You can't attach things well, to minutes. Sure because you can. But minutes are public. But we call And we don't want that going out. Um, but there aren't names. There's not any names. Okay. You, they're they're just cards. grids. Yeah, but there are positions and they're small enough that they identify. Um, no. They are. They are. Yes, they are. <laughs> We're not big enough so it doesn't show or tell what it is. Can we change it? Could we change, I don't want to get into the weeds here, but like exhibit A was, what did we call this? This was, it was, well, I mean, exhibit A was the teacher. Can I suggest something here? Please, yeah. please. Oh. I want to be um, let us come back to you on the 29th with how we can recategorize this to make it sense that it can reflect this. I think we just need some brain time yeah, to look at these because you'll have another shot at all this So we'll too. hold off on... So um, let us reformat some of this. Yeah, you know, once we get counselors. this other discussion and all that, there may be... A, we struggle with names for these things and how to categorize them anyway. Okay, so we still have a motion and a second on the table. I would... I'm wondering if we can vote this one down so that we can bring it back, if that's okay with people. Bruce, what would you like to do on this? Yeah, that's fine. Let's figure out. I'll vote no. Yeah. So figure we, out we, we can look on your motion to approve those minutes with your additions. We're voting on your motion to approve the minutes. For, so we're voting to approve the entire minutes of August 12th? No. No, we're actually going to hopefully vote to not approve them so that they come back and we can read So we're them. voting on approving the minutes for August 4th. Correct. Correct. Yes. Okay, I think we have to finish voting on my amendment before we. Right. We back. did. I we said did. no to the amendment. I guess that was a swing vote. Okay. So the amendment failed. The minutes Asia. approval. Let's vote on that one now. Lori made a vote motion to, uh, so did you get both of those motions? Because I missed having an amendment one on there and I should have had that. So I have the initial motion to approve the August 12th minutes. And then I have that in the motion by Lori, second by Katie. Yep. And then Lori asked for the amendment. And I the first amendment that was voted down then she asked for the second amendment to add the second by thermos and the step five clarification. And I have that one as failing. The first mm -hmm. amendment did, did, did succeed. The thermos succeeded. The addition of thermos as the second motion. That amendment succeeded. We didn't It was not a separate amendment. Oh, it was as two? You wanted as two? I thought you said that and Catherine agreed that that should be addressed. I made a motion to amend the minutes to state it as I have it written here. I did not make two separate motions. Okay, so then the amendment did fail. So okay. now we're voting to approve the minutes as they are for August 12th. Correct. Bruce? No. Katie? No. No. Myself, Catherine, no. and Lori? No. All right, so those minutes will come back to our next work session, hopefully with some way of referencing the exhibits mm -hmm. that helped us with and the when decisions. we get them Thanks, let's take a close look at them and make they have made some suggestions before they come yeah all yeah, right we'll work on that too. all right so we are now on to 7b board bills can i make a motion you sure could you could actually can do I a make motion, motion? For B and C i'm and going D. to make a motion to approve consent agenda items b c and d Thank you. Second. Thank you. Okay, first, Bruce, second to approve consent agenda items A, 7B, C, and D. That's true. Any questions on those? Yeah. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Thank you, Patty Jo. Any opposed? Great. That's yeah. done. Thanks, Katie. General information next meeting now is August 29th, Thursday, At 6 o'clock. Right here. We also have September 9th, which will be the annual meeting. And six o'clock as well. Six o'clock as well. Do we have a school board meeting at six and the annual meeting at seven? Correct. And then we have our next meeting. 
Yeah, oh, when you're done, can I give you some good news? The 23rd. Yeah, okay, the okay we'll let them finish. If you don't mind, okay. the nope, 23rd, no, we'll be at 6.30. Yep, okay, so now do you want to put it in beforehand or after our once around the table? When do you do want good news? Once around the table, <laughs> the once around the table um, Catherine. Okay. Oh, yes. Um, I would like to have uh, a report from the police liaison. Me too. Thank you very much. Because we, uh, when we redid that, we said periodically we'd like we would like a report. It would be nice to have one for the last half of the year he was here. I don't think we got one on last week. Nope. So no. that's why I'm asking for one. Yeah. All yeah. right. Did you have anything else? Oh. Lori? Um, I have a couple of things. At our last retreat, we were supposed oh. to discuss the staff survey, and we haven't done that yet. Oh, yeah. Uh, we were also supposed to go through our board evaluation document and set goals, and we haven't done that. And I think we are probably past time where we were supposed to meet with Mark about his goals and his evaluation. Yep. You're absolutely right on all of those, but we had some things that took precedence. Well, so I'm just bringing them <laughs> yeah, up. Yep. Yep. Well, we can't forget about them, but the no, compensation for staff has just got to Over. be first on that. <laughs> first in October, November deal. Um, so, Mark, if you have put together any of your thoughts on for your eval that you want to share with us, or do you want to just wait until we meet well, on that's it? That's what I sent to you about a month ago. Okay, <laughs> I know, and so I. I so you do what you want with it. I've, okay. I've just been adding to it. So, okay. um, do you want to send it out to the board? Uh, I, think I, I was going to hold it until we actually show. met, but I'll send it out. Um, Bruce, what what would well, you? I think mean? Mark's up. He has something, right? What? No, no, whatever you have. We're going to do the runs around Yeah, I don't know. I'm good. I'm good. Okay, now, Mark, share yeah, with us some good news. Yeah, really good news. You know, we know our enrollment's going to be up this year. And we're actually going to be close to 500 kids in high school, which is more than I think we've ever had up there. Uh, the other thing is, is that... Uh, that is good news. Our activities, our fall activities, uh, you know, I think Trent's going to run some numbers on this, but we're... We got kids coming out of our years and activities. We got over 60 girls playing volleyball. That's yeah. just awesome. Yeah, football. I went and watched the football team up at Rice Lake last Friday in their scrimmages. And it's just, it, it's fun. It's exciting to see what this weight program, this training yeah. program that you approved, is making a difference. Wonderful. Uh, the other thing is, is I spent today just a fun day with all of our new staff. I'm so excited about the people, the hires that we've made over the last couple of years. Uh, you know, obviously, I mean, these kids are younger than my kids, and it's just uh, the energy they bring. And, you know, today I had them for an hour, one hour 15 this morning, just walking through our strategic plan and just dif different things about the district and working with their mentors. And then we took them from 11 o'clock, we took them, them and all new employees and their mentors up to not just up for lunch and spent an hour up there getting to know people socializing. And we took them on a bus tour around the district, which we have a lot of fun with. <laughs> I should be a Hollywood guided tour guide, yeah. but that's my next profession. And then we took them to, uh, down to the uh, uh, factory. cheese factory for some ice cream afterwards and we brought them back. But the neat thing about this, in, in the morning when we went through an introduction exercise, I had them talk about, you know, just different things about themselves, introduce them. But the one thing I asked them was, specifically why Somerset and this just nailed it for me I would say two-thirds of them said that you know when we were looking at jobs you know we checked out areas and people had nothing but good things to say about coming to work in the district here so of all the things we always deal with you know we never see right. some of these things but it was just a real shot in the arm for me this man we got a pretty good rap out there you know and that that was really exciting to hear and you know, you look at it this last year, you know, I talked to other soups and they're struggling to find people. We've been pretty fortunate. We've had pretty good pools. You know, again, our proximity to the cities and Hudson and that helps. But uh, I tell you, it's just good to hear that this morning from these, young, these people coming in here that, and we have a lot of people that just came back to Somerset where I think we've hired three or four Somerset grads this year. Yeah. And, and some aren't recent grads, some are, you know, a little uh -huh. older than that. But that is wonderful. It's just, you know, we've we got a great little kept secret here, you know. Good. So, that is great. And yeah. people are finding us, so it's okay too. That's how awesome. about the soccer, the boys' soccer? How, how, how can you slow them down that? 
they said today was their first day of the year at 23 or 24. Which well, gives us but it gives us a comfortable week to move our city into January. Nice. So How about Girls Golf? Girls Golf is 13 or 14. That's, and they that's said good. That's not bad. They have a busy week. They had a meet today, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. So they have four meets. Oh, so wow. Their season is virtually oh, over wow. halfway done when school starts. So yeah. um, Trent, last between. year we had um, a reduction in numbers in football, and speculation was that more parents are worried about concussions. Are what do you see in there? Um, I think our numbers are are slightly down from last year. However, if you look at the number of kids that have been doing the off season strength and conditioning, that percentage is pretty strong. Good. So, um, I think our kids are equipped better than they ever have been, and it's it's a complete testament to our coaches and the program for what they do. I mean. They fund they fundraise a lot for that to make sure our kids are properly equipped safely because that stuff costs a lot of money and they have a great job. So our kids between their shoulder pads, their helmets, they have a cap that they can put over the helmets for practice. I mean they are so well taken care of. It's it's awesome. So I think between our five varsity sports for our five WIA sports, golf, girls golf, volleyball, boys soccer, football, um, cross country, and then also cheer and dance, I would be pretty confident that they were well over 170 kids out for those activities and it's probably actually higher as conservative. Yeah. We'll see who stays out through the end of the week here with, with the start of the season, but it's a pretty good start. So. Thank good. you. All right, identity and a motion to adjourn. Second. Thank you, Katie. Thank you, Captain. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Aye. aye. Thank you very much. Thank you, Patty Joe, for putting Thanks, us in Patty. your schedule. Take care of yourself. You're doing good work, kids. Thank you. You too. Bye.